Alright, hello everyone, it's AKWA91, Anthony Hapel here, and today I'm going to be doing one of these games I've got this month video. Uh, so, I haven't, I haven't been picking up many new games in October, but I did pick up a brand new game console. And I have been busy getting all with, um, play with my playthroughs, and I have been making some headline. I have been making some progress on that. I got my playthrough completed, and I'm on to the next one. And and in terms of other stuff, I'm getting on great. And if I'm, but if I'm sounding a little bit hard, that's because I've got a bit of a cold coming. And, you know, it's the end of October, and it's coming toward the time now. The weather's going to start getting cold. So, what I've got here is a brand new game console. And four new PS3 games. One is a fighting game, and... One is one is from and it's three and three in the earth and the last three are entries in a very peculiar in a very familiar series. And one one that should be familiar to my friends, which I which I'm gonna dread talking about the second I pull them up on the screen. Right, so I'm gonna start off. <coughs> sorry, so <coughs> sorry about that. I'm just going to the top. Half coming. So I'm gonna talk about my new device I recently picked up, which is. The PlayStation Vita. This is a nifty device I've been mean, wanting to get my hands on for quite some time, because even though I've got a PlayStation TV, which it serves as like consoleized version of the PlayStation Vita, uh, the PlayStation Vita itself is the console that you want, not the PlayStation TV. Because even though the PlayStation TV is a good is a good device by itself, the PlayStation TV is good serving like some sort of like a cheap alternative to the PS. Beta, but it has a certain compatibility limit. So getting a PS Vita is really what you need. And I got my hands on the PlayStation Vita like a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, and I've been setting it all up, setting my PlayStation Network account on, on onto it, and setting what games I want to play on it. But I, I need to buy, one, buy myself a memory card. And trust me, those things are very ridiculous to come by. Because of how expensive they are. And I have got one installed on my v, on my PlayStation TV. A 16GB one, but I want to get like something like a 32GB one. I think the 32GB one will be, probably be the most beneficial. Which means, like, I can put um, any of the incompatible PlayStation TV games, any of the games that are not compatible with the PlayStation TV onto the Vita itself, and I can play them anytime. And, uh... What else? Um... Whilst any of the, um... Games I want to do play on the PlayStation TV that works on it, I put it on the PlayStation TV itself. Now I have got about six of physical games on that PlayStation Vita, and I've shown them in my PlayStation Vita unboxing video. If you haven't seen that yet, I do recommend you check that out. It gives me my personal thoughts on the PlayStation Vita and why it didn't do so good in our market. Whereas it did, whereas in Japan it was really popular there. Uh, 
I did have a problem with the with the, with the, with the device beforehand, a few weeks, a few days before when I first had it. Um, there was a problem with the right analog stick, this stick right here. But I eventually fit, and I was going to take it back to try and see if I can repair it. But the prices for it were just too too much. And what I was hoping they'd do was like, hope they clean like some parts of the insides of it without disassembling it. Which is what I see like a couple of online folks doing. So what I did decide to do was take matters into my own hands. And I decided to repair the right analog stick myself without disassembling the system. I, re I basically just put a bit of cloth over it, went it with a bit of water, rubbed it, rubbed the analog stick the innards of the right analog stick about over and over for like a couple of minutes then dried it off with a cloth and then afterwards it worked fine so I tested it with uh, remote play and um, Pilzo Mercenary and it all worked fine and I didn't have any future problems now I haven't got much installed on it I only got one game installed on here because I've only got like a limited memory on on here. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but I hope to get a memory. I'm hoping to save up for a 32 gigabyte memory card if I can, or if I'm lucky, save up for a 64 mem. Or if I'm lucky purchase a 64 megabyte 64 gigabyte memory card for the PS Vita. I did see one of these before and I and I remember my brother Simon bringing this over my house and I had a go on it. So I played um what is it? Crazy Taxi and Trials on it. Which were really entertaining. I actually really liked those. So I kinda had a play on those those and I then eventually yeah, and eventually got me to, and eventually it kind of got me a PS TV, because I saw it for like 25 quid, and that was just with the console unit itself, it doesn't come with a controller, it doesn't come with a memory card or anything like that, you have to purchase the controller and a memory card separately. I know, it's kind of a bit stupid to be honest, but at least for 25 quid I can't be, I can't, <clears throat> I couldn't fault it. But getting this was ne is necessary if you want to play the full library of the PlayStation Vita games. There's some games that will not that will not work on the PlayStation TV, even due to like games got some touchscreen mechanics, or there's games that utilize motion controls, or games that the developers just don't think they would work on the PlayStation TV for some reason. Which is kind of a reason why the PlayStation TV was a failure. Because they really didn't expand the library of PlayStation and Vita games all that much. But I don't but some fan favourites were more pop were compatible on it, like um, Persona 4 Golden. I'm aware it was compatible. Because I have got that game myself. Uh, I've got this because I do have some incompatible um, PlayStation Vita games that do not work with the PlayStation TV, like um, Space Hawk, Wanted Corp, Draw Slasher, and Hyper Dimension and Tomb of Rebirth One, which I do want to play, but only after I beat the, play the PlayStation Three versions of it, which I'm still looking to find, which I'm still gonna search around and find. And I am gonna do, and I'm gonna start like uh, Neptunia, the original one. Uh, something I think maybe after my uh, Tales, after the playthrough of Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition. And yeah, I'll talk about Tales of in, in a moment, and in a, a li quite later. Uh, so what else? So I'm happy to have the PlayStation Vita. I would do want to get a memory card, and also might want to get accessories for it, like a screen protector and a controller grip, because I got a controller grip for my PS Lite. 
<laughs> yeah, so as I said, I'm gonna get a controller grip for this, for this thing, because I got, oh, you should put it on the screen. I got a controller grip for my DS Lite, I got a controller grip for my PSV, I got a controller grip for my 3DS. Uh, I don't have a controller grip for the Revo K101, my Game Boy Advance cl clone console, but I don't think uh, I don't think um, they would have those because it's a clone console after all. I would have to make one myself. Uh, and all I need now is to get just to get one for the PS Vita, so it'll be good. It would be nice if I could try this using using my PSP's um, grip controller grip, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> oh well, it's a different build after all. Alas, it's no big deal. So that's my so that's my new PlayStation Vita. I got it in this little sleeve box here. Did get a plug. Did, I like and all I got with it is just a USB cable. I'm hoping to get a U. A plug that I can plug the USB cable into, so I can just put it into a plug instead of using my computer. Instead of you know having to require to turn on my PC to just to charge the damn thing, or or using my PS4 or PS3, whatever. I have been using it with a PS PlayStation 4 remote play as well. I've been playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 with it. And um, Tales of Hysteria with it so far. I mean, <clears throat> they're really, really good with the PlayStation Vita, with the PlayStation Vita's remote play system. I'm hoping to try some of my other PS4 games with my PlayStation Vita remote play system because it's it's really this is really impressive in terms of technology they accomplished here. But I just wish that the PlayStation Vita had a bit more of a chance on the market compared to like the 3DS and the PSP. Alright, so next up I've got four games on the PS3. And I'm gonna talk about the top one first and then talk about the about the next three altogether. Right, so here we are. Next game is nothing now on the PS3. I picked up is I kind of have three Love Max. Now this will be familiar because I actually already have okay kind of have three Love Max on the PlayStation Vita, and here it is. And here it is. This is the PlayStation Vita counterpart. They're basically identically the same game, except the only difference is. They have separate trophy lists from what I've looked up online, and it's true. They got the, they got separate trophy lists, so that means if you want to get a platinum trophy on this and a platinum trophy on this, then you can. And I wouldn't mind doing that because I'm interested in collecting the trophies. For it. this is basically an updated, and this game itself is basically just an updated version. Of the original or kind of half free. In other words, it's like the updated Street Fighter 2 or the updated Street Fighter 4. So here it is. Here's, a, here's the original or kind of half free. So if you played Love Max, so if you played um, a kind of half free, you played a kind of half free Love Max, but the main difference is it's got some rebalancing and a new story mode. And some new content, I think. Although I haven't dove into this one to have a look and see. I'm yet to fully play through on Kind of Hat Free. All I played on here is just the one of the characters' storylines, that being um, Angelia, um, which is what is, what is it? This girl here, which is this young girl here, the blonde-haired girl. Girl who's holding a doll. Don't know if you can see it. Try to put it on screen here. That's the story mode that I've beaten through at the moment. And I've only beaten through the what is it? The score attack mode twice on the original.
And I've only played through like um, the, the training mode as well. Because there's a trophy for getting like the train for like 15 minutes. So you can uh, get used to the controls and how the characters handle. And then one of the things I'm, I'm trying to get used to is... Um, uh, and so how to use each of the characters on Kana. Because it's necessary to use like each of the each of the individual characters like a canna to like these little spheres which give them like super abilities or whatever. So it's good. So it's a good fighting game, not the best. It's from Exomo and and it but it is published by Arc System Works, the same same guys who who do the um, who develop the Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, and Persona Four Arena games. And 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 there's, and there's one other fighting game series, um, Under Night in Birth. Yeah. And I do like the game itself. I mean, it's a it's a comp. It's a very complex fighting game, but you've got like the opportunity, the option to put in the characters in um, in simple control, so you can um, play it in a more simplified manner. If you want, if you want, if you want, that's good. I did, however, also when I played the original game face off with one of the most notorious fighting game bosses of all time. Part Ace, let's see here. I see you. I think that's how she's pronounced. I'm I'm really not one hundred percent sure. And one thing to say about Part Ace let's see here. She she is a mo she is a fan service diva who will constantly destroy you in an instant. Basically, what happened? Basically, she is programmed to beat you. One simple press of a button, she will instantly combo you. <coughs> she is so that she's difficult to get, even get land hits on. She constantly counter attacks you all the time. Gets out of supers so quickly before you can before you can. And each and each and every single one of them is enough to destroy you, destroy you in an instant. It is so difficult to even even get her health down, let alone so let alone let alone survive. You can even get destroyed in something like less than five seconds into the fight with her, and even fighting her on easy, she's not. She is still super difficult. <coughs> I only managed to defeat her on the original version of a Kanaha 3, which is this one. That's because there's a bit of a gimmick with um, with the original a Kanaha 3. Every time you lose on score attack mode and continue. Her health drops by a her health drops by a pixel. So that means the more times you lose to her, the more health she drops down. The more her health permanently drops down. So that it makes it easier for you to fight to defeat her. But even then, she's still difficult. <clears throat> Because you still have, a, because you still have, a, because there's still chances that she'll pulverize you very quickly. She'll still get off her super as fast as you can, and you still have very little chance of survival. And the only, and the only way you're gonna ever defeat her is take it slow, get your supers out, get your super or counter attacks quicker as quickly as you possibly can. So that hopefully you'll one shot her. Little jump cut there. 
But yeah, if you're going to be fighting in Paras in um, Arcana Half 3, you're going to need to take it slow and use your Arcana powers as quickly as you possibly can. Get it to the max so that you, hopefully you can one shot a. Uh, it's pretty much your only method of winning if you're hoping to try and do it. Otherwise, you're never going to win. But I think also, but I think in the Love Max editions, including the Six Stars version, which is exclusive to Steam, by the way, the, the pay system in which um, Paris's health decreases after you continue does not happen in any of the Love Max versions. So that means you have to fight Paras with her constantly regenerating her health. Which does make the fight much a little bit too unfair. But what do you expect? She's a fight she's a, she's a fighting game final boss. Way more difficult than Akuma in Street Fighter in Super Street Fighter 2. Way more difficult than Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat. And way more difficult, I think, in Azazel in Tekken 6, although I haven't got Tekken 6, so I wouldn't know. But I'll take what my friend Thomas says about Tekken 6, his final, bo final boss. Um, this is worth for it. So, but still, I quite like um, kind of half free, and I'm hoping to find online boosters to uh, boost on this game because I have got this game I have got this version of the game I've got this version of the game as well and I have got this version of the game as well I'm going to look on playstationprofiles.com and see if there's going to be people online boosting this game because I really do want the online trophies for this game And I do like the title, and I do like the name on them. I do like the way they uh, said on the back of the box of the original, This ain't no Street Fighter. <laughs> do you know what I would say? This ain't no Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, kind of half free. Love that. Now then. Right, and I say now, in my trip to Newport, I bought three games, all from a particular series. But it's all from a particular series of games I played that I originally had on the Xbox 360. I didn't want to show, I didn't want to show them it on my Facebook channel for a reason. I wanted to wait for the right time to show them because I was st I was looking through Thomas Bybee's um, trophy lists on PSNProfiles.com. I saw them on, on I saw them on his trophy list, and I thought, do I want to torture myself with them just to add them to my trophy collection? Ladies and gentlemen, I have right here three games on the PS3 and they are I'm going to put them on the screen because it would be a shocker to some of you because I already own those games, I hated them and now they're back and these are That's right. Final Fantasy 13. I have the Final Fantasy. 
I have the Final Fantasy XIII Trilogy again. This time on the PlayStation 3. And before you ask, why do I have them again? It's because I saw them on Thomas Bybee's um, trophy list and I thought, oh dear god, do I want to torture myself with these? Do I want to play them again? Even though I already played through all three of them. Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13 2, and Final Fantasy 13 3. Oh dear god. Yep. I got all three of them in a single day. I saw them in CEX for like a total of six, three, six, fourteen quid together. Wow. I'm gonna be in a real torture because I was. Me and my friends were hyped for Final Fantasy XIII back in um, our college days. Back when we started college. When I left school and started college. We were excited for the Final Fantasy XIII, considering how they talked about the story and they talked about their main character and the new system they were going to implement. But when we, got, when we got the actual game, what we sat through was a linear, it was a disappointing linear experience. And I personally didn't think it was going to be that bad, but Jesus Christ, when I got, eventually got my copy, everyone was right about it. It was not just a story that was it was not just a story that was bad. It was not just the main characters that was bad. It was the gameplay itself that was that was so bad. It was not just an entire entirely linear mess. The combat was was a, was simplistic, but at times punishingly was punishingly awful. You don't get the optional content until like um, you're 40, you're 40 hours into the story, I, I think, 30 or 40 hours into the story, and it's by then you probably, you probably wouldn't give, you would probably wouldn't care. Lightning is one of the worst Final Fantasy heroes of all time, alongside uh, Hope and Vanille, which are just some of the most obnoxious characters. Harris in Final Fantasy history. <coughs> uh, what else? Um, the Paragon Chase was also, was also poorly implemented. Yep, you can exploit the combat system too much. But alas, I've got it again. I'm going for the Platinum Trophy run of this game. I'm only, I'm only um, two or three hours into the story. And I've only just started a bit of grinding. Working out, and eventually when I finish grinding, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go onwards. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's that one. 13-2, 13-2, I agree with Professional Jerry when I watched his um, videos, when he did on the top 10 worst games of 20, 2012, 2012, I would say, where he, where he had this game on his list, and, he's, and he really gave a lot of comments about the story, and I do agree with him. The story is told in a very convoluted matter. And the game itself is hardly much of an improvement over the original, but I do agree they have addressed a few things with it, such as the whole, such as making the game long linear, first appeared on shits, and the ability to capture monsters, but the game itself is mostly just the same. And they even brought back some of the environments from the original Final Fantasy XIII. And it will still and it's and it will still be quite boring to sit through compared as well as the original game which was also boring 
The story itself with 13-2, it was told in such a ridiculously convoluted matter, where much of it didn't make make all that much sense. And it ended and it had and, it, and the ending of it was such a ridiculous cop out was ridiculous and the ending was just ridiculous. Which led to the Lightning DLC. And eventually Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII, which I have to say was one of the worst Final Fantasy games I ever sat through. Like the story was more, which more was much more ridiculous than the last. Lightning becomes like Lightning becomes a goddess for the Lightning, Lightning becomes the chosen for chosen task of being the savior by the god Benavelza. And he says, like, if he does what, if he, if she does what he asks him to do, he'd be reunited with Sarah, who was killed in, who was originally dead in thirteen, who was, was killed at the end of thirteen two. Like what? And lightning's all out. And lightning becomes like this really emotionless, emotionless doll, completely devoid of anything devoid of any kind of personality as well and they treat her like some sort of dress up slut and that's entirely what they treated lightning as just a dress up mob just a dress up model and it's just what the hell are they thinking with this they were just really trying to just make lightning into this complete model and this is and he even used and he even used lightning as a as a as a marketing employee in Japan to try and make a, to try and sell off as much marketing modeling material as possible after this game as well, which was it was just ridiculous the way they treated the way they treated her like that. And none of us liked lightning in the first place. None of us Western fans liked Lightning in the first place because she was she was this selfish bimbo who didn't care about anything that was going who didn't care about anything but herself. She let her sister be be enthralled into danger. She can't she constantly punches her boyfriend in the face for no reason when he's trying to help. And it's just, oh my, and it's just, oh my god. And she's even, and she's just as bad in um, Dissidia as well. But at least in Dissidia you get to beat the crap out of her. Just to shut the fucking bitch up. That's one thing, that's the reason I wanted, I wanted Dissidia 012 in the first place. Is to beat the shit out of Lightning. Just to shut the bitch up for good. She definitely makes a good target. She definitely makes target practice. That's for sure. Because everyone just really wants to beat the shit out of Lightning. I'll probably end up doing the same with Dissidia NT for the uh, PS4. Just buying the game just so I can beat the crap out of Lightning. Oh, and Noctis. And Squall. <sighs> and all the other worst Final Fantasy characters you can possibly throw in. Throw in. Another thing about Lightning Returns I hated was the combat system, which is, it's meant to be done like, sort of like an action role playing system. <coughs> Only that you have this, these commands you constantly transform into afterward, you transform them. You have to like free these schematics, these free these schematic clothing that you transform into once you, um, ATV system runs, your yeah, ATV bar runs out. It's like you, when your ATV bar of one is out, switch to another one and use all the abilities till that's out. And you're supposed to, <clears throat> in order to try and break the gauge. But the only thing is, timing is so difficult to time you know, because enemies get off their attacks faster, very quickly. It's at times difficult to time in the blocks uh parries don't necessarily work all that well uh and another thing is there's no leveling system in the game 
That's the word, that is the fatal flaw with Lightning Returns. There's no level system at all. Instead, you only get stronger by doing quests for people. And that's, and that's the most deplorable thing about Lightning Returns. Instead of fighting monsters for experience points, you're an errand girl. Running around, doing stupid, mundane tasks for people. This could be... This could be, for example, um, one quest you had... There was this one town... Uh, there's one quest we do... We trek all 12 of the, town, of the town's clock towers just to see if they're working. There's one quest where you take, where you have to escort a sheep, a horde of sheep back into its hurdle, and you do that one twice. There's one quest where you race a mech boy, where you race a little boy to the finish line, and the boy, unlike and unlike the mech boy race in Tales of Fantasia and Tales of Destiny, where the mech boy goes super fast and he becomes like a true challenging race, this boy. This is the slow runner. And you can instantly run to the finish line and he takes like 10 weeks to even get to the finish line himself. You'll be there for that lot. You'll be there waiting for 10 minutes just to wait for his... Or 5 minutes, rather. Just to wait for his stupid face to come back to you. And the worst thing is, with these quests and lightning returns, quests have to be done a specific hours of the day, in a very specific manner. There are times some areas do not, some areas close off at certain times of the day. So that means if you're if you're in a particular quest that you're doing, and a whole area closes off, you're in trouble and you can't do anything. You have no choice but to wait for the next day. You have to wait for the next day so that this so that the area opens. And yeah, and did I mention the game has a time limit as well? That's right, the game has a time limit. In order to do as many quests as possible, so that you can do this main story quest. So you can advance onward. And the only way that I'm sure able to, be, to beat the game is to do every single quest that you, that you can but leave out the last story part of the game that's important and let the time run out so that you can start the game on the new game plus and then do all the same then do all the same quests again so you can get enough stat points that you need in order to stand a chance against some of the bosses. Because here's the thing, bosses are aggressive, they do tons of damage. Even at the highest possible stats possible. You can there are just times your stats are just not high enough and then you, sit, then you just die instantly and then you have, then you have zero chance of winning and the only way you're ever going to sustain a chance in lightning returns is to just continuously play all these stupid quests get as much armor and equipment as possible And hopefully, and by saving and loading every single time, and it's just ridiculous. And trust me, that's what I did in my playthrough of Lightning Returns. I had to, I had to save and load every single time. So, I've got all three of the Final Fantasy XIII games. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to having these games back, but... I do want to do the Platinum Trophy runs for them. I'll start with 13 the original. Once I platinum that one, I'll do 13 too. And then I'll platinum this one. I have played all three of these on my on my channel. <laughs> channel on my original Xbox 360 when I played the Xbox 360 versions. But there were some boss fights in Light and Returns I didn't do. And in 13 2, I didn't do any of the DLC bosses. I can't, I couldn't be asked. I didn't care. Because <coughs> I really didn't care for the, for the game that much. So I didn't care for 13 2 all that much. But in terms of a Final Fantasy game, 13 game, the best is done. 
we can, yeah, we are going to later talk with my friend Hans about all these. And we can all agree that even though 13 even though 13 is trash, the trash is to the Final Fantasy universe. We would say that Thirteen two is the best of them all, it's because at least they tried. It's at least Square Enix knew what they did wrong with the original and tried to improve it in some in some way or form, even though it wasn't very good. And Lightning Returns is the worst of the three. Thirteen the original thirteen is bad in every sense. The word. But, we, but what, would you, what would you play out of these two? Would you rather play this, or would you rather play this? You can't, if it were me, if, but if it were to me, and if I had the choice between these two, I'd rather play, I, I would in fact rather play this, because it wouldn't be as torturous as Lightning Returns. Because the combat system on this is so horrendous, the quest system is dumb, the story is stupid, and Lightning is just atrocious as she was in the original. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous, but alas, I have them again. <coughs> now then, I'm going to talk about my current, what I have been playing through this past month. I have been playing through Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. You know, it's the Final Fantasy XV variant. Where, instead of it being the main game like this, it's a cheapy-eyed version of the game originally for the tablet devices. Is that with the character models having... Except that, yes, the characters all have chibi to form forms, Instead, the characters do not have any 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 kind of facial animations, nor any lip syncing, making them look like character models for, that belonged on the Nintendo 64. And um, yes, and I'm being dead serious when I say it. At least fa Final Fantasy 3 and 4 on the DS, which were also put into the iOS, had um, character models that. Um, I had facial animations and and actual lip syncing animations. Whereas in Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition, they just look ridiculous and at times really ugly. And Arden looking like some sort of terrible, terribly drawn Cartoon Network villain. That's right. I've seen Cartoon Network villains in kids. I've seen kids. I've seen characters. I've seen villains in these. Awful cartoon network shows and we're seeing that we're getting nowadays. I like far better drawing than Arden does in in 15 Pocket Edition. But in any case, I went through the whole game and it's one of the more easy and it's the e and it's a very ridiculously easy platinum trophy run than your actual 15 game itself. But basically all I need to say is for 15 Pocket Edition, if you play Final Fantasy 15, you play Pocket Edition for the most part. It's just a, it's just that in Pocket Edition, they simplified the whole entire game, take away a lot of the side quests that made it good. Remove the remove the majority of mini games. <coughs> I made everything as overly simplistically easy as possible. That's super difficult to fail. I know my playthrough of it made it look look a little bit newbie, but you have to see just how simplistic the game really is. And in some cases, I actually did feel kind of bored. It was just time to I was just bored. I was just really bored playing through it. I wasn't interested in any of it before. I wasn't interested interested in the storyline of 15 because 15, I'm going to say this, is almost about as ridiculously convoluted as 13. But I will say it's more greedier than 13. 
because the amount of milking it's done. Because you've got the game itself, you've got the DLC, and you got more DLC on the way. You got the you got street you got poorly done Street Fighter clone. No street Streets of Rage clone. Sorry, not Street Fighter. Uh, streets of Rage. You have got a movie, an anime. Uh, which aren't that great, which aren't good. You got a fishing game. You got Nautilus in Tekken Seven. You got Nautilus and his buddies in Minecraft. Yes, that's true. I've seen it. You got a mobile strategy game, and now you got um, Pocket Edition, and you also got um, the regalia from this game in Forza. So I'm kind of like, so I'm, all I can say is I'm glad I'm finished. I'm glad I got that game over and done with. And I got the Platinum Trophy as well, making it my 16th, my currently my 16th Platinum Trophy. Which is good. And all I can say is I'm not looking forward to doing, I'm not looking forward to doing I'm not looking forward to doing the majority of the new DLC for 15, which comes out 20, which comes out next year, in 2019. I gotta look forward to the new Tales of a Spirit Definitive Edition remake, and it not having Troy Baker for the new cutscenes. <laughs> at least that'll be, at least that's where, at least that'll be worth something, because even though it'll have Troy Baker for the old stuff. And Troy Baker for the for the majority of the battle sequences. It will now Troy Baker for the new stuff. Uh, and another thing, and, and, that, and also, but now I got. I and I also will say I've also been playing Star Wars Battlefront Two. The 2017 version, playing the what is it the online multiplayer? I'm still been I'm still playing the online multiplayer. Uh, I've got I mean I'm getting a lot of my star cards upgraded. I've gotten. A lot of the multiplayer achievements are still going. I mean, I'm still getting, I'm still got a couple of multiplayer achievements, and I would start the campaign, but I want to take, but I want to take some time to watch the Star Wars movies again, so I can get a better understanding of the Star Wars universe again, and. Uh, I want to watch the original Star Wars trilogy. No, the Clone Wars trilogy first, the original trilogy afterwards, and then the Clone Wars series, the Rogue One movie, the Han Solo movie, and then Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Not sure when the not sure what, what time place the Star Wars Han Solo movie takes place or Rogue One. I think mean, Rogue One takes place before the first before um, Star Wars: A New Hope, so I'll have to look into that. So yeah, I'm still enjoying Star Wars Battlefront too, even though it's got a share of ridiculous problems. Uh, you know the microtransactions and all that. EA has since improved the game considerably, and they are still adding content to it. And I think today they're adding the General Grievous um, update on there, and I think also maybe Obi Wan Kenobi. So Obi Wan Kenobi and General Grievous will be fun to play as, but I'll be.
Yeah, a little jump cut there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the um, update from EA. They're going to have Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think, I'm not sure. But they'll be having General Grievous and I can't wait to play as him. Especially when I fight the Rebels as him. It'll be, fu it'll be funny playing as General Grievous in the Clone Wars saga into the um, original trilogy storyline. Oh, uh, it'll be fun. He'll be, uh, he'll be sending all the rebels packing. <coughs> I know it sounds bizarre, but this is basically what this new Star Wars Battlefront game does. It takes all the Star Wars characters from all every single era, whether it's Clone Wars, uh, the original trilogy, and and the new trilogy story. And the, and, the, and the current um, storyline of the Star Wars series all together and you get to see like um, villains and heroes from all areas fighting, fighting alongside or against each other and it's it's pretty bizarre at times but still I still like it I still don't mind it even but since the changes I started to like it a bit more And EA has since apologized for all the for all the bet. So yeah, I'm looking forward to today's updates with our general Grievous. Can we just start playing him? Uh so what else? I know I started a new playthrough. And that game is on Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And Castlevania Symphony of the Night, oh my goodness, it was a spe it was a spectacular Castlevania game. The first Castlevania game I've played, not counting the NES Classic Castlevania game I that I still have on my GBA, which is the Nintendo, which is the classic Nintendo NES version of Castlevania. So Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a different kind of Castlevania from the original Castlevania games because they turn it into a, like this Metroidvania style game where they give you all these different, where it's non-linear, you got a whole, whole, all, all kinds of different rooms to explore. You got save points and you got this whole, and you got this role-playing mechanic as well. Where you're getting experience points and you're leveling up your character. In this case, in Symphony of the Night's case, it's Alucard. The son of the set the son of Dracula. I played for Sumi Night originally on the PS1, I had it on an emulator. And it was truly incredible. I really liked it. The story. I really liked the story, the setting. And I really like the whole um, non-linear probe that they took with the game, and the voice acting was really was really was really good. Even though even though some of the lines were very cheesy, you know, like "What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets." <laughs> still laugh at, I still giggle a lot by that line. Now the version I'm playing on the PS4 is part of the Castlevania Requiem compilation which has Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Now these two versions that they've included are the PSP updates where they, where they redub the whole game with all new English voice actors. Especially Symphony of the Night which has an all new English dub. And the dialogue is different from the original, which it, it did upset some fans. But it's good that we get to see um, Rondo of Blood be included in the package as well. Which is the true Castlevania Dracula X story. 
that we that we in the West didn't get. And what we got on the Super Nintendo was a slightly altered version of Castlevania Dracula X, which was which was utter garbage. Which over over here in Europe, it was known as Castlevania Vampire's Kiss in order to try and censor the game over here in Europe. And it was the same case that they that um, Konami did with Castlevania Bloodlines. They censored the European version of it toned by toning down the violence, removing the relig religious um, content. So I think of some of the relig religious um, references. I'm changing the title name. Which was all, which would really upset some European players. The one who wanted like the proper experience. But I'm glad to see Symphony of the Night being being released on the PlayStation 4. As um, I had Symphony of the Night on the Xbox 360 when I had my Xbox 360 console. I put, I saw it on an Xbox Live Arcade, played the demo, and then I eventually bought the full game. And I remember, and I remember going through the game, and I got all the achievements on it. It was an easy 200 points. You get achievements for um. Kill enemy weapons without taking damage, using spells without taking damage, uh, using cell weapons without taking damage, finding all the secrets, exploring the whole game, playing through the game as Richter, Belmont, um, and so on. It was just a very easy, it was a very easy um, 200 gamer points to run. As I've been going through it as Richter, because I wasn't really all that great with Richter. I couldn't, I couldn't do some of his special moves all that well. No, oh, dropped something there. Oh well, never mind. Not sure where, those, where that came from. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't real that good with Sumi the Night playing as Richter, but I was sweet at playing through the game as Alucard. So I'm glad to have Super Hero Night on the PS4. I got it now. But one thing to say about Red Castlevania Requiem, if you are going to think about getting it, it's basically Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles without the Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles remake itself, which is a remake of um, Rondo of Blood. But hey, at least you get Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. In which Rondo of Blood was, 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 only, was only ever released in Japan on the PC Engine originally. And it, we never got to see that version of Rondo of Blood until the PSP re until the PSP in Dracula X Chronicles. And like I said, the version we, we Westerners got instead was a crappy version of the game. On, which was which was titled Castlevania Dracula X, which we in Europe we had it as um, Castlevania Vampire's Kiss, which was awful. Which were, and that game is just awful. It was just an awful version of the game. Because the reason for that, and the reason it was. And the reason that um, Dracula X on the Super NES was terrible was um, it didn't have as many levels. It, it, it ignored the cutscenes. You couldn't play as Maria Renard, who was a new character, who was a character introduced in it, and she's a returning character in Symphony of the Night as well. She's a grown-up woman. It 
and here in Ron in Rondo of Black, she's all she's a twelve year old. And another thing about um, Dracula X on the SNES, it didn't. And gameplay, the gameplay on the Super NES version was actually much more difficult um, than the original version. Especially the final boss against Dracula, which in the SNES version, he was much more difficult. And I watched someone's playthrough of the Super NES version, uh, GSAR 321's playthrough of it. And trust me, if you watch his playthrough of it, uh... You'll see why the Super NES version was inferior in so many levels. Another reason why players didn't like the Super NES version of it because it was released after Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania 4, I should say, where Super Castlevania 4 was the pinnacle of the series, the best in the franchise, one of the best games in the franchise, next to Symphony of the Night, um, where it allowed you to whip in all eight directions. Whereas in Dracula X, it goes back to the um, the NES control, the NES control. So that was another thing why fans were pissed off at it. But what do you expect? It's Konami. The same Konami that tossed away Hideo Kojima. Poor Kojima. We really do feel sorry for Kojima. But alas, his great games will Apple forever live on. And there's a, there's a sad thing why I got Symphony of the Night because I want to see Konami go back to their good ways again. Their old good ways. They need to toss out the bad and literally get their heads back in the game. Like literally. If they can put their heads back in the game then they could have a chance of redemption. Like maybe like like what Capcom has done, or maybe what Ubisoft has done, they could have a chance again. And this is exactly my saying to Square Enix as well. They need to get their heads back in the game as well. They need to start milking their franchises and just really bring out something that could literally grab all our attentions again. And literally toss all, toss out all this microtransaction crap that's been plaguing this whole, that's been plaguing all our favorite franchises from the start. So that's what we, so I'm going to be doing a full playthrough of Symphony of the Night. I will upload some videos later or tomorrow. Yeah, maybe one video a day or something. So I can stay focused on what I'm working on. <laughs> so yeah. So that is what I'm going to be working with guys. You will see a playthrough of Symphony in the Night. I will work on the game review of it afterwards. And maybe afterwards, after that game, I'm going to go back to the Tales Marathon because I want to because the whole announcement of Tales of Espia Definitive Edition, I gotta go back to those Tales games I'm gonna do. Tales of Innocence and Tales of Hearts R. So I really wanna go back and play those ones, the ones that got English um, band translation patches, the ones that got um, an English localization that managed to somehow. Yeah. And as well as that, I and I know I've been saying this quite a fair amount of times, but I should go really go back and do so some of those top ten blogs. And while also, and also, smell, and also, and start in November, I'm gonna think about starting my Christmas list as well, so I can tell my parents what I would like for Christmas, and that way, I'll have all the time in the world to work on what I want to work on. So that'll be so that'll be quite good. It'll get a lot. Of my, it'll, it'll be less stressful for me, and I'll be able to get more stuff done out of the way. As well as that, I need to organize my channel a little bit, get, get some of the get some of the, those screenshots I have on my hard drive out of the way. The screenshots I got of trophies unlocked on my PS4. I'm gonna have them uploaded on my channel. Probably have them uploaded. 
I'll probably add them on my chan on my Facebook channel now. So I'm gonna have a quiet this <laughs> I'll have quite a lot of work to do. For the next quite for the next couple of months. So I hope you guys enjoyed um me talking about my games. And in case Tom is by me and in case my friends are asking why am I did this again? This is a this is a, um a second time I'm, I've uploaded this. It's because like it got so late in the night. Um, it got it started to get really late and it started to get very really dark and I couldn't see what was going on with the video, so I figured I'd take it down and I thought I'd re shoot all this. But hopefully, it turned out pretty well. So yes, yeah, so this is what I got. An all new game, an all new games console. I kind of have free love, Max, and the Final Fantasy Thirteen trilogy. Oh jeez. But I hope you guys enjoyed all of this. <sighs> but I hope you guys enjoyed all of this and hope you enjoy my current plans so um, I'm gonna be doing and expect some too many even like videos sometime soon. Um I will be uploading a full playthrough of it. It will show all this game it will show the whole gameplay, it may show all the secret, it will show all the secrets if I can remember what where they all are. I will try a little glitch and trick sometime. And trust me it'll be more of an entertaining glitch video. Including this one famous glitch trick, which is like very popular among the um, Super Nintendo Light players. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this video showcasing what I've got, what I got from my, what I picked up last month, and I hope to see you all again in the next video. So take care of yourselves and goodbye.